Hello, welcome back to Gano Sushi Life Noding. Um, in this episode, um, we're gonna try to um, recreate these effects. Um, I, I watched it just last night, and uh, this the, the 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 owner actually called it the Node Flow, and he actually um, kind of like a geniusly, brilliantly um, showing how to do these effects in four different package. Um, Sophie Much Eyes that's no longer available, and then Houdini. Light wave, and then also uh, he tried to use uh, animation nodes to do this, and I kind of tried to follow it, um, but I kind of lost uh, some at some points. Um, it doesn't have spare choke yet, so I'll try to do the same thing um, on using spare choke add-on. So and try to make it clear. I think even with the animation nodes, uh, this can be done even like simpler. That uh, people can easily more un uh, understand, because the thing with nodes is that. Um, Sometimes you can have like multiple solutions and some are more complicated than uh, it necessary. So let's, uh, I'll start with spare chalk add-on, uh, blank blender file. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'll just call it node flow. Um, so basically, right, the idea is to have um, uh, a point, uh, actually a bunch of points to move from position A to position B. And then when it reaches position B, it's gonna kind of loop back to the position A, kind of like uh, he said, going into some kind of portal tunnel. And we, we have to do it for all this uh, bunch of points. And they are also um, kind of being offset in time. So seems like complicated, but I know there's a one trick in Spectral that we can do. And that's called um, vector lerp. Now, this node is actually Pretty powerful. Um, I'll show you very quickly why. So we get uh, we can start with um, using random vector. I'll have like twenty for now, or actually ten. Ten is fine. So I'm gonna have this uh, random points, and this guy. Let's see if I'm using the viewer draw. You you will see what's going on. So I have a uh, um, ten points being scattered and I will have uh, another one with random seed so you can see they are all at different point so I'm gonna plug these two together and then as a result we're gonna have this guy so the same number of points and I will make sure it's the same number of points so 10 plug into this guy and this guy so and it's gonna interpolate between those two positions okay so by having that uh, we can we can actually um, easily create um, some kind of uh, offset of points that's kind of traveling between position a and b so yeah let's do that actually i'll increase the scale of this guy and so we can have that kind of effect i will actually flatten both of them um, scalar 0 to the Z, same to this guy. <clears throat> so what we have now is uh, points traveling in a flat, um, like a flat ground. But what we really want, uh, let's say we have like the same scale of these two, and then with this guy, we're going to push it up a little bit. Uh, with scalar, actually, we can just push it up. So now what we have is point traveling from A to B, all traveling at the same time. And I'll have 25 of them. I'll have the same seed actually. So they are just like kind of moving from bottom to up. So that's kind of cool, but we want to have them kind of looping. So when it reached, uh, when it reached point B at the top there, it's gonna have to come back to point zero. So in order to do that, I will use um, uh, frame number and modulo. So frame number goes in there, and then the modulo should be set to 1. Uh, where's modulo? Modulo, OK. Plug into the factor. And so if we run this, I think. Um, I'll use math here. 
multiply the time by 0 0.05 so it's traveling slower so it's kind of moving from zero position A to position B and then come back to position A it's kind of looping they are all moving at the same time so it's kind of like uh, it looks very abrupt so we don't want that we want it to be kind of smoother and everything is like, like offset so how do we do that we simply um, we can use some kind of offset of course here just add a um, bunch of number um, maybe random number and this random number should be the same size and I'll just randomize it with some kind of value between negative whatever and this goes in there <clears throat> and now you can see uh, we have this kind of effects it's almost like particles that's kind of going in a loop so yeah I think we are getting somewhere um, it's already getting better we can adjust the scaling here if you like but I'm gonna leave it one for now so we have all this bunch uh, all these points kind of looping uh, so that's good I'm gonna save it and the next thing I will do is to generate like a, a bunch of boxes that we can actually control and deform using um, curve modifier so <clears throat> we have this guy and I'm gonna use a um, box actually and I'm gonna save this leave that somewhere and this goes into the matrix and you can see that's gonna be a uh, transform for our boxes so we have these boxes and this box actually can have different lengths uh, instead of using box actually I have better idea I just use cylinder and use like a small value this cylinder can actually deform um, so let's give it like value of 4 or vertices of 4 we need to have a cap um, the size let's make it smaller so we have that so that's good um, the height we can randomize at any point and what else we can do yeah I think it's getting somewhere and we need, just need to deform it so in order to deform it we need like a real objects so we're gonna use a um, matrix apply here just combine all these objects with the transformations into a single object and output it as a real object viewer B mesh so this should give us this it's a real object and we can uh, so we can actually use a uh, matcap and ambient occlusion so we can see better now the next thing we want to do is to have some kind of curve to de deform this guy so I go to the front view and orthographic I'm gonna deform this using grease pencil so I'm just gonna draw something like that um, it's actually at the wrong position so I I'm gonna move the stroke a little bit there it's better and we're gonna grab the grease pencil real quick uh, control space get the GP setup thing and GP layer active frame so we have this curve already resampled and we're gonna output a um, polyline viewer just plug this in there so we have a curve and with that curve we can deform this guy so this um, and then curve deformer and assign our curve and now this guy should move along the curve if we set it to Z okay I think it's getting um, better now it's uh, we just need to perhaps change the the value here somewhere uh, modulo okay increase the modulo I think so this guy can move further down the line and we can have more cubes offset it further so some some kind of adjustment there and we can also now adjust the scaling
there we go and yeah I think this is just it takes a bit of um, adjustment here and there but the effect is getting there uh, you get the idea we can increase the resolution of the cylinder as well and we can even randomize the, the, the radius of the cylinder if you like so instead of same value we can have a randomized um, value for that random number generator float how many do we have uh, 30 40 so we have 227 plug it in this goes into the radius so we have a different size of blocks there uh, I think it can be improved um, definitely uh, this guy is a four I think yeah I think about that size we can of course scale it um, you can also like uh, because this is curved deformer you can kind of randomize the radius here so that's kind of cool as well um, and if I'm not wrong you can also twist it so random number generator plug into the this guy with the size matching the number of curve uh, curve points you can have kind of neat effects um, I kind of want to twist it so let's try range range float into the twist and we can try twisting this guy so there you go there's you have uh, quite a complicated effect there it's all pretty simple um, you just use uh, this Fairchalk add-on in Blender to do this and we can always adjust all these and everything is real time and yeah I think that's pretty neat effect um, I think we can actually use the same effects to do some kind of tornado kind of effects which will be better using particles but we can always add particles on top of this uh, so yeah, that's a quick way uh, you can do this kind of a uh, not flow effects um, using Spherechalk add-on in Blender. Um, thanks Pedro Alpiarca for this. I think this guy is I think is pretty brilliant. He knows a lot about Houdini and Sophie much all that. Huh. I wish I know more about Houdini, but anyway, uh, that's how you do it using Blender and Spherechalk add-on. Thank you. Bye.